we get started here. So if you hear me way in the back back there, just raise your hand and make some noise for us. Hey, great. We've got a fun crew. Also, I have to issue just a few words of warning to those of you on the right side of the shuttle. That's the side that I'm seated on. You folks are going to get just a little wet on your tour today. Okay? Have you heard that or not? And for those of you on the left side, the ones who might be laughing at the people on the right side, you folks get soaking wet on your tour today. Yeah. So now's a good time to change your seats around. Because once we do get started, we are going to ask that you do remain fully seated, keeping your hands, arms, and legs inside the shuttle at all times. And for the comfort and courtesy of those around you, please refrain from eating, drinking, and smoking. At this time, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is John, and I'll be your guide on the Backstage Studio Tour. We are the Orlando counterpart to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. And behind me at the wheel is our safe driver, Arson. He's going to be steering us on our working production center. Everyone say hello, Arson. Hello, Arson. Well, good evening, everyone. Just sit back and relax. Enjoy a fantastic guy. Thanks very much, Arson. We're going to be taking off here in just a few seconds, folks. So for now, sit back, relax, and try to keep cool. We Folks here at the load station, because unfortunately we're not coming back, gang, but there's another shuttle right behind us. And once again, good afternoon, welcome to the Backstage Studio Tour. Our tour begins just as we depart from the shuttle station. If you look off to the right, you're going to see the Disney Animation Building. And inside there, our Disney animators are hard at work on its 30th full-length animated feature entitled Beauty and the Beast, and that's going to be released this November. Also on the right, we have our entertainment offices. That's where we audition 5,000 people a year for the 730 performing roles here at Walt Disney World. Here at the Disney MGM Studios, folks, we feature sound stages, state-of-the-art editing facilities, indoor sets, outdoor sets, recording studios, and everything else needed to make a major motion picture or television show. And speaking of pictures, folks, feel free to shoot as much film and video as you like on your tour because there are no photo restrictions. And your first photo opportunity is coming up high in the sky to your right. It's the symbol of our Disney MGM Studios. It's our award-winning Earful Tower. The masterpiece stands 13 stories tall and is capped off with a set of Mickey Mouse ears that weigh 16 tons. And in case you're wondering, that's a hat size up there, 342 and 3 eighths. A little closer to the ground is one of our larger prop storage areas. The futuristic looking police cars were used in Blade Runner starring Harrison Ford. That red coyote car was used in the television series Hard Castle McCormick starring Brian Keith. The black classic car with the green spokes, that's from the film The Untouchables starring Sean Connery and Kevin Costner. And folks, for your safety and answers, you do remain fully seated throughout the shuttle tour. This is for your safety as well as those around you. Once again, folks, please remain fully seated for your safety. Thank you very much. The next uh, row of cars here, the colorful vintage cars, were used in the film Dick Tracy, starring Warren Beatty and Madonna. And over to your left, you'll see some of our production bungalows. This is where we house production teams that are currently working here at the studios. In bung bungalow number one and three, we house Blue Wave Productions, or better known as the Mickey Mouse Club. And in bungalow number two, a new game show called That's My Dog. And we'll see the set for that in just a while. We've now been steered into a small branch of our greens department. This is where we house trees, plants, and shrubs until they're needed on the set. Greenery is often used to hide what the camera is not supposed to see. For instance, we might use a row of tall trees to hide the fact that only a portion of a set has actually been built. We grow our greenery in the portable boxes so that they can easily be transported from set to set. And if we do use greenery on a soundstage, we have to carefully fireproof each branch, twig, and leaf. We even have our own cast of characters like the Toy Soldier and Samurai Warrior. They're known as topiaries and they take up to 10 years to fully grow and develop. And you can see it throughout the property here at Walt Disney World. If a director needs a 30-foot flower set, well, we even have one of those. That unique twisted figure there, that's a prop that was used in the film Honey, I Drunk the Kids. We're now going to move into a more glamorous department, the world of creative costuming. If you look off to the left, you're going to see where 180 artists design and manufacture the costumes for a motion picture and television and live entertainment needs. It all begins with those designer sketches, some of which can be seen inside on the far wall. Then our talented seamstresses and tailors take over. They've been known to use over 175,000 yards of fabric to produce over 12,000 garments a year. Some of the original garments can be seen in the display cases as we pass by. You'll see the dress worn by Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman, Warren Beatty and Madonna from Dick Tracy, the Jolly Holiday dress worn by Julie Andrews and Mary Poppins, Epcot Center thriller Captain EO starring Michael Jackson and the human co-stars of Luke Frame's Roger Rabbit. Here in Central Florida, folks, we're proud to say we have the world's largest working wardrobe with over two and a half million garments. Whoa. Just beyond costuming in some of the more technical areas, our lighting department is where we house three and a half million watts of light for video and film production. Now to put that perspective, folks, that's enough light inside to light up a city the size of Orlando. 
Adjacent to our lighting department is our award-winning Dick Tracy makeup shop where you'll see some of the masks and appliances used to transform such actors as Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman into the comic book criminals for the film Dick Tracy. The next two rooms are the camera department where technicians maintain the cameras here at the studios. But if you look off to the right, you're going to see a very special Delta L1011. When this full-size aircraft is in store here in its custom-built hangar, you can see it on one of our sound stages for Delta commercials, Delta training films, or even feature films. It was used in the feature film Quick Change, starring Bill Murray and Gina Davis. This once flew in the Delta fleet for 11 years, was then brought here to the studios, cut up and modified for production use. Finally, off to the left, you'll see the scenic shop. That's where carpenters build and maintain the sets that are used here on location. It's not unusual for us to get props in a film from flea markets, antique shops, or even garage sales. And if we can't find it, our talented carpenters can always build it. A set that gets used over and over again is known in the business as a standing set. A standing set can be as simple as a bedroom or as elaborate as an entire house. And in just a few moments, we're going to see some very unusual houses. Folks, when production crews travel to cities and towns, they often run into problems that they have little or no control over. Problems such as traffic, crowds, and noise. Well, to get around these problems, they often prefer to shoot right here on a studio backlot. This part of our backlot is known as Residential Street. Now, many people say they would love to come and live here at Walt Disney World, but before you pack your bags, I want you to take a close look at the first house coming up on the right. The sign on the front lawn says it all, open house. You see, all the houses here on Residential Street are just besides empty shelves. You can take a look through that house if you like, and I mean through. Different scripts call for different neighborhoods, so all the houses here in Residential Street depict different areas of our country. If your story takes place in Northeast, for example, you could use that first Pennsylvania Dutch style home for a winter holiday scene. In fact, the production crew did just that. They added some colored lights, a few pines, and 50 tons of man-made snow, and we had our own winter holiday scene right here under Florida sunny skies in the middle of July. That's one of the nice things about a backlot. Folks, you can even control the weather. Over to your left, a Miami-style home park underneath the carport. It's a 1963 Cadillac that caused all the trouble in the film Tin Men, starring Richard Dreyfuss and Danny DeVito. But by far the most filmed house on Residential Street is coming up to your left. It's a beige Hawaiian-style home. It's the home to B. Arthur, Betty White, Rue McClanahan, and Estelle Getty, whose Saturday night TV watchers will recognize it as the home of the Emmy Award-winning Golden Girls. The exterior shots are shot right here in Central Florida, and then they're edited together with interior footage in California. Now once a house has been selected for a shoot here in Residential Street, set designers come in, add dressings and props to give that home that lived-in look. And that's what they've done with the last house on the left. Notice the details like the newspaper at the door, the basketball goal, even the, the uh, scuff marks on the garage door, and just give it that lived-in look. And over to your right, you'll see the set for a game show called That's My Dog. It's very popular in Europe. It's where canine cuties compete for cash and prizes. And it's now being filmed here at the studios to be shown on cable this fall. And speaking of dogs, it's not every residential neighborhood has a 30-foot bulldog smoking a pipe. We have one of our very own coming up on the right. It's the Bulldog Cafe from the film The Rocketeer. That's where the flyer's meant to eat. Parked out front's the GB airplane. That was awarded to the hero of that film, Cliff Secord, by Howard Hughes. And just straight ahead, it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles about to go on for the last performance of the evening. Cowabunga, dudes. It looks like they just got back from another pizza break. Now we're going to pause here for just a few moments until they go by, folks, and then we'll head a little deeper into our back lot. And it looks like we're all clearing on our way once again. We have to sometimes pause for traffic, and that's what we're doing right now. We're going to be on our way in just a few moments. Over to your left, you'll see a small town church uh, with simple windows and clapboard sides. As we go around the corner, that church becomes a big city cathedral, which is appropriate because the big city is straight ahead. Our driver, however, is going to take us a little bit deeper into our back lot in just a few moments. This is also one of my favorite parts of the tour. It's because I get to see everyone in the back, finally. How you doing back there, gang? The more you wave, the more of a breeze that makes for us up here. Thanks very much. Yeah. We're going to head to one of our boneyards now, folks. Now, a boneyard isn't where food or a goofy berries and bone. This is where we have props that are used in major motion pictures, television shows, such as planes, train seats, even a station for two. If you have the Disney Channel, you may recognize Dumbo Circus Wagon from Dumbo Circus and the Black Speedboat that's modeled after an SR-71 Blackbird biplane that was used in Walt Disney Television's 100 Lives of Black Jack Savage. 
The blue helicopter cockpit from the film Blue Thunder, starring Roy Strider, and the silver tail set to that airplane, that's from the 1942 classic Casablanca, starring Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. The front half of the plane can be seen at the great movie ride here at the studios. The authentic Army vehicles can be drafted into a motion picture or television show at a moment's notice. And all of the props in our boneyard were at one time or other used for a major motion picture or television show. The three blue limits coming up to your right are three of the seven used in the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Of course, they deflect different stages throughout that movie. The final stage, uh, the instant made convertible, that's the one Roger Rabbit got his hands on. That Pacific Electric Charlie car, that's also from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Notice the steel wheels, they're just fiberglass covering over a bus's real rubber tires. That's actually a modified bus, folks. We have our own exclusive yacht club. And the two silver space pods, they're from the 1986 film Flight of the Navigator. One for the flight scenes and the other for the ground scenes. And for you Dick Tracy film fans on board, you may recognize those giant colorful gears from the climactic finale of that film. Take a good look though, they're not steel gears, they're fiberglass, styrofoam, and wood, not weighing more than 70 pounds each. Now folks, remember earlier when I was saying the houses on Residential Street were just facades? If you look across that canal, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's not much privacy in that community. Notice the architectural details like the shingles on the roof up there. They stop just beyond the camera's range because we only build what the camera needs to see. But what if the camera needs to see something that isn't there? Something like an active oil field in a rocky, dry, barren desert canyon. Well, you wouldn't find that environment naturally here in Central Florida, so we decided to build a set like that, and we call it Catastrophe Canyon. Now we're going to go inside so I can show you one of the great effects we can do on a back lot, and we will be going over a bumpy, wickety bridge, so hang on to those loose items like hats, glasses, cameras, and small children. This canyon was modeled after a real canyon in California, and it took us six months to build this one set, which may seem like a long time, but with the effects you can do on a back lot, you'll see it's well worth the effort.
cut it with a steel thruster covered with wire mesh. The wire mesh is then covered with a color layer of cement, which is hand formed to look like natural rock formation. The little yellow pipes that are running throughout the set, they carry the gas for all the fire and explosions that you saw, and the larger white pipes carry water to three large tanks above the canyon. The flat flood was created when we opened the gates of those three tanks, and 70,000 gallons of water came thundering towards our shuttle. To add more effect, we used air cannons to blow some of that water over the rocks. Those air cannons are so powerful, if we took one to New York City and placed a basketball inside, it would blow that basketball over the Empire State Building. The earthquake, that was done with the help of large hydraulic shaker tables located underneath the bridge. They also are so powerful, if we turned one up all the way, it could take a 2,000 pound object brought over the railing and into the bottom of the canyon. Catastrophe Canyon was built with the help of a Hollywood special effects team folks, and what looked like out of control catastrophes inside was really a safe computerized sequence of events that only takes three and a half minutes to totally reset and recycle all that water, and that's just enough time for a busy day for another several of the victims to go inside. We're able to go from the canyons of California to the streets of New York in under one minute. That way you'll see some of the steel structure that holds up our facades on New York Street. Now take notice of that brick and stone work, folks, because it's not real brick and stone at all. It's actually fiberglass, styrofoam, and wood with just a thin spray of cement. Uh, those buildings have been painted and aged to look much older than they really are. If you get time today, knock on them, you'll see how hollow they are. They can withstand hurricane force winds of up to 90 miles an hour here in Central Florida. Now, if you put your cameras away back in the canyon, now's a good time to get them out because you're going to have a great photo opportunity of the New York City skyline right here in Central Florida. All you have to do is point them through this archway of our Washington Square and you'll see what I mean. Now, that's an old movie-making technique known as forced perspective. The real Empire State Building down there, that's well over uh, 100 stories tall. Ours is just a little over four stories. They're two-dimensional painted flats, much the same as billboards. This, again, is also where those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were partying down. And sticking out of the garage, that's the Dipmobile from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I sure heart, hope there aren't any tunes on board. It's also an indication to me that we're coming up on the end of our backstage studio tour. But if you'd like to learn more about movie making techniques, I invite you to go see Inside the Magic Special Effects and Production Tour. All you have to do is follow the big giant pink footprints of Roger Rabbit. Also, there's a young lady there with a the yellow flag. She needs a studio audience for the TV's Disney Channel tryout. And you're welcome to see her uh, for any more information. Again, if you'd like to be part of the studio audience for the Disney Channel's TV tryouts, feel free to see, to see the lady with the yellow flag. My name's John, folks, and I've been your tour guide today. Behind us at the wheel's been Arson. And we hope you have a wonderful day here at the Disney MGM Studio Theme Park. Please remain seated till the shuttle comes to a complete stop. And lower your head and watch you your step as you depart. Goodbye, everyone.